So today, let us confess our sin now in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go on our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Our prayer of the day today. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your Spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now continue with today's readings. In this first reading today, in the book of Isaiah, the fifth chapter, the prophet sings a sad parable-like love song about the relationship between God and Israel. In this song, Israel is compared to a promising vineyard. Despite God's loving care, the vineyard that is Israel has brought forth wild grapes of injustice and distress. When fine grapes of justice and righteousness were expected. Our reading. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. He hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yield, yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns." I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Our gospel reading for today is found in the gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. In this gospel, Jesus now is telling us a parable to the religious Leaders who are plotting his death, revealing that their plans will ironically bring about the fulfillment of Scripture. Our reading. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he released it to the tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slave and beat one, killed another, and stoned yet another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them the same as, same as the first. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw out the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death, and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, 
Have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that the rebuilders reject has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone who falls on it. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them, and they wanted to arrest him. But they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This ends our gospel reading for today. As we know, this is a time the kids hopefully are doing schoolwork. Hopefully very soon we'll be able to be back to school. So it's a good time for us now to bless the school year. We have gathered now together items that need to be blessed for the gift of education. Holy God, the time has come when school begins. As the children now begin their studies, we ask a blessing on their backpacks and pencils that they will use to learn. Bless each student gathered here that they will seek every opportunity to grow in knowledge and love of you. And bless, O oh God, our cherished children, those whom we have promised to love and nurture at their baptism. Keep them now safe. Keep them healthy. Keep them free from any harm. Please make them excited to be where they are now, to, to seek more learning and to develop the gifts that you have given them. Grant that through their study, they may gain the tools to grow in love and faith and service all their days. We also ask you, Lord, to bless all who teach our children in the coming days and weeks and months, to keep them also safe and healthy, to give them the wisdom to find inspiration for each child, Give them the energy and creativity to love that will make their work a blessing to our children. So, Lord, bless these backpacks and the children who will be carrying them. Bless them in all that they need to do, these kids, and help them to learn. Amen. In a normal year, we would have had the children all come up with their backpacks spread out and we would have been able to have laid hands on those children to bless them directly. But for this year, obviously, things are different. So keep all the children in prayer. Now let me start my message out with prayer. Lord, so often we just feel maybe we're out of place. Maybe things aren't just quite right. We feel maybe we're from Mars instead of Earth. Yes, I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Just help us to be right with you, Lord. Help us to be, work in your vineyard, this Earth that you have given us, to do the work that you have called us to do. Amen. I want to start out with a couple of stories. It's a man that flew over to Japan. He didn't know how to speak Japanese. He knew nothing about the language. He had heard, though, that the Japanese cab drivers did not really speak much English either. And he needed, after he landed, he needed to get to his hotel. He had no clue how to relay that message on to the cab driver. So he decided, he found, he was walking the, the airport, and he found a matchbook with the name of the hotel he was going to. And he thought, wow, what a great idea. I can just show the cab driver this matchbook, and he'll know exactly where to take me. So he goes outside, gets in a cab, tries to communicate to the cab driver where he needed to go, pulled out that matchbook, pointed to it. There was a little bit of back and forth going on for a while. Finally, the cab driver smiled and, he said, and, and then turned on the car and away they went. Well, about a half hour later, they pull up in front of a building. 
And yes, this building had the name that was on the matchbook. But when the man that had just traveled to Japan looked at the building, it was not a hotel. And yes, maybe you can guess what it was. It was the factory that made the matchbooks. Have you ever had an experience maybe similar to that? Someone will say something, and for whatever reason, you do not understand. It's as if they were speaking in a foreign language. You want to go back to the hotel, but instead you find yourselves in front of a match factory. I mentioned in my prayer that sometimes we feel like we're from Mars. I'm going to tell a story about this real quick. There were two aliens landed on Earth that were from Mars. They just wanted to blend in and find out what it was like to be a person on this Earth. So they got a hold of some clothes that, nor that people here on Earth would wear, got a few things, and then they went out and walked through the town. Everything went really well all day long in the, as they walked around. Nobody suspected anything. They blended in very well. They went to a restaurant finally that night, a very, very expensive restaurant. They ordered a meal. It was awesome. After they paid their bill, though, the waiter looked at them and said, Are you from Mars? Now, that took, kind of took them back a little bit. How did you know, sir? They asked. And the waiter said, well, you must be from Mars. You paid in cash. Everybody here always pays with a credit card. Communication can be a challenge sometimes. There were times when Jesus tried to communicate profound truths to those that were around him. And they acted as if he were from Mars. He would say something and he could watch their eyes kind of glaze over. Particularly, he had difficulty getting through to the religious officials of his day. They were so sure of themselves and their standing in the community that they were impervious to everything that he did, everything that he said. What would you do in that situation? You're trying to communicate something that's important, but who, the person you're trying to communicate to just doesn't get it. You're just not getting through. That was the situation Jesus found himself in. He did what he often did then. He told a story. He told a parable. So he told a story of rebellion that communicates some key information about our, our role in his kingdom. We are to remember that it is his kingdom, yet we have a responsibility to be good stewards. There was a rebellion in the vineyard. Let's go back to that gospel story. When harvest time came, the landowner sent some of his servants to the vineyard to collect his share of the produce. High in the watchtower, as scripture says, the tenants saw the servants approaching, and instead of welcoming them, they handed them over, well, instead of welcoming them and handing over the rightful payment, the tenants beat the servants, killed one, and stoned another. Word reached the landowner. He was extremely displeased. He sent some more servants for his share. And again, the same thing happened. <clears throat> Finally, the landowner decided to send his son. He thought, they'll respect my son. When the tenants saw the son approaching, they said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him and let's get the inheritance. And that is exactly what they did. The tenants killed the landowner's son. Does this story sound familiar at all to you? Isn't this the story of Jesus? You know what, people of God? We are the tenants. There are times when all of us will try to put ourselves into God's seat. There are times when all of us act as if the world is our kingdom and we're supreme over all that we survey. We forget that everything we have is on loan to us from God. 
We are temporary tenants. We don't own anything, even though we are sometimes, we act as if we own it all. Everything ultimately belongs to God. There's a cute story about a church that was located right across the parking lot from a store. Church didn't have much of a parking lot itself. So <coughs> the church council got together. They decided to send a representative to talk to the store, store owner. They asked the owner, is there any chance at all we could... Uh, you?" Sometimes I just get caught up with my lips. Is there any chance at all, sir, they said, that we could use your parking lot on Sundays because we notice you are not open on Sundays. The store owner said, sure, that would be great. But he said, you know what? There's one contingency to it. You can use my parking lot 51 weeks out of the year. The representative from the church kind of looks surprised. and He says, what do you mean 51? There's 52 weeks in the year. The store, store owner went on to say, yes, there are 52 weeks in the year, but one week out of each year, I'm going to rope off that parking lot just so you remember that I own it. Do you get the point? Sometimes we act like owners when we are only the tenants. Happiness comes to those who understand that they own nothing. These tenants in our lesson today were greedy. They wanted everything for themselves and were unwilling to give the landowner his fair share. The landowner, on the other hand, was very generous. He had given them control of his vast estate. They could have all of its abundance. All he asked for was his share of the produce. Kind of sounds like you and me at times, doesn't it? God has provided for us so abundantly. All he asks is a small portion back in return. But we are greedy, and we want to withhold what is rightfully his. How sad. Happiness. The happiest people who have ever lived are those who gratefully acknowledge the ownership of God. So finally today, Jesus calls us to good stewardship. The religious people of Jesus' time had been entrusted with the spiritual care of God's people. Unfortunately, many of them looked upon it only as a job, a way of earning a good living, and a source of prestige and power. They were so set in their ways that they stoned the prophets, the prophets who threatened their comfortable life, and eventually, yes, they crucified God's own son. I think that's a warning to every each. I think it's a warning for each one of us, especially us that are involved in the religious work, whether we're clergy or laity. We all have a responsibility. I want to close with a story. There was an oil refinery. It was fairly new, nice and shiny, built out in the country. And some people from the town wanted to go out and get a tour of this oil refinery. They went in to the office and they said, hey, please, give us a tour. We're curious. People in the office didn't know what to do. Should we give them a tour? Should we not? We've never had this request so far. Finally, they decided to give the group a tour. They took the people up and down the hallways and the aisles, showed them all the shiny, shiny pipes that were there, all the great facility they walked them through, showing them how it all worked and worked together. Finally, though, one person in the group said, there's one more place I want to see. The tour guide said, well, what is that, sir? And he said, well, I want to see your distribution center, how everything is shipped out. The guide kind of looked kind of funny. And then he said, sir, we don't have a shipping area. We don't distribute what we make here. 
People on the tour said, but that doesn't make any sense. How do you get the gas that you make to the people that need it so you can make money? And they said, we burn all the energy we make here at this plant to keep this plant running. Think about that. Think about that. Could that be us? Is all our energy used up just keeping the church afloat? Could it be that we're no better than Jesus' enemies? Could it be that we too confuse our mission at times with comfort and with ease? Would Christ receive the same reception if he were here right now? People of God, I've got good news for you here at First English. We do give to the community, to the state, to the world. We do give of our resources, food, and money to help people. And we do a pretty good job of it. Can we always do better? Yes, we can. But I do need to remind you, people of God, that it does take resources to do that. So remember that as you go through this week. How can I help the vineyard of God, the community that he has entrusted us to, with the resources that he has given us, how can I help contribute more to that? You see, people of God, this is not our world, it's God's. It's not our church, it's God's. We are only the tenants, the stewards of it. We have a responsibility to return to him a portion of what he already has had and to use that which we have received to his glory. Be a good tenant, people of God. Let's give, and let's love. Amen. Now please join with me as we profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So today, for our prayers of the people, your response is, hear our prayer. Today, we pray with confidence in God's grace and mercy. Let us now pray for the church, the world, and for all of those that are in need. Holy God, you call us to work for peace and justice in your vineyard. Refresh the church with your life, that we may bear fruit through work and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the abundant harvest of the earth. Bless and care for those whose hands bring the fruits of the earth to the tables of all who hunger. May we be inspired by your servants who care deeply for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we thank you for our law enforcement. Thank you for the men and women who serve, who put on a uniform and stand in the front line and answer the call and run towards the crisis, not away from it. We ask you to protect them, to give them peace, the peace from you. May they know how valuable that they are. Give them wisdom to work together for the betterment of us all. We pray for their families. May they be encouraged and filled with hope. We pray that they won't quit. May they give their hearts to you and have a revelation the revelation that your son Jesus gives to all that will bring a whole and new meaning to what they do. We thank you for the liberties and freedoms that we have, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, you sustain all who suffer with the promise of a new life, assured that your presence 
Heal our pain and suffering and equip us to embrace all bodies that are hurting right now. We especially pray for George and Verna Dauberke, Connie Seidel, Pastor Marty and Lola Rugi, for Daniel Rinke, Claudine Ross, Tom Jones, Debbie Sheets, Roger LaPointe, Gail McNeil, Dave McNeil, Sally Bartz, and Dave Potratz, and those right now, Lord, that we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we pray for all managers in our community and for all who seek employment. Give hope and a future to those who lack meaningful work, those who have been marginalized or abused in the workplace, and those who deserve new opportunities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, listen as we call on you. Enfold and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of ages to save and to redeem each of us and to proclaim to us your will. Jesus is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. Jesus took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. It is our Lord Jesus who fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust in you. It is Jesus who was handed over to a death, a death that he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one. So, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also in remembrance of me. Please join with me now as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's the body of Christ that was given for you. and the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Let's pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with the food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place now, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same, Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God bless you now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will. Thanks for tuning in to us. May God be with you this week.